All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's now noon, so let's begin. Uh, this is the 2024 Apple Industry Outlook um, presented with Chris Gerlach of uh, US Apple. And um, let me just begin with a couple of tech notes. Um, if you want to control your webinar viewing, use the red arrow at the upper right-hand corner of your screen to expand the control panel. In that control panel, you can adjust your audio. Um, you can also type in questions at any point using the questions function of the, of the uh, control panel. We will reserve the questions until after the presentation, and then we will ask. Uh, we will have plenty of time for Q&A uh, following Chris's presentation. Um, let me share a slide with you, uh, the disclaimer to keep the legal folks happy that uh, this information is presented in good faith and believed to be accurate, but it is not intended to be investment, uh, tax, or legal advice. Um, and then, of course, our presenter is the Director of Industry Analytics at US Apple and someone who's been around the Apple industry for a long time, um, obviously very knowledgeable, and US Apple is, a, is the National Trade Association of Apple Producers in the US. Um, if you are producing apples and are not a member, you should be. Um, so I will put in a plug for the organization. They do a great job of tracking um, apples in storage by location, variety, um, and as well as production and um, produce, put out a lot of great information. Um, with that, I will transfer the uh, screen over to Chris. Um, you should get a pop-up box in a minute. And that will allow you to share your slides. Great. Yep, we can yeah. see your slides. It's fine now. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that nice introduction. Um, yes. Uh, so uh, we at the U.S. Apple Association uh, take care of the whole supply chain uh, from uh, you know nurseries up to to grocery stores and to, when it when it comes to fresh uh, apples and and apple products. So. Um, I'm going to jump right in. We have a lot to cover today. Uh, we're going to start with um, uh, looking at the, some production estimates review, just get everyone on the same page uh, where we kind of thought this season was going to start. And, and then we'll go into some Apple Tracker storages, um, our monthly storage report uh, to sort of see if, uh, if that matches our, our preconceived notion uh, ahead of the season. Uh, we'll look at some movement trends, uh, look at some trade trends, and uh, then some other relevant issues. Um, <clears throat> again, before we start, I'm just going to, uh, you know, the macroeconomic context, you know, everyone is uh, holding their breath, waiting for the other shoe to drop and, and recession to set in. I, I have no more information on that than you do, other than, uh, you know, the, uh, the unemployment rate just ticked up a couple tenths of a percent, but it's still under 4%. So, that's looking good. Um, uh, inflation, which we'll talk a lot about today, uh, also ticked up in February um, and is above that 2% uh, target rate for the Fed. And so there, the latest discussions out of the Fed is, um, you know, since the downturn uh, in 2020, uh, they've pretty much been, uh, um, you know, they cut those rates and have been building them back up. Um, and, uh, the uh, the latest um, is that uh, they're thinking in, in June they might uh, cut that again to uh, to try and tamper this inflation. So that is um, just super high level macro stuff. Uh, just another a couple co other context slides. So in terms of I don't have access to uh, domestic consumption data uh, out of Nielsen or IRI or anything like that. But uh, obviously on a production per capita basis, this is this is where we are. Um, and uh, as you can see from that trend line, uh, we are we are tailing off in terms of uh, production per capita. Um, and so that's something that when we're talking about what to do with uh, excess apples, we need to keep in mind uh, that this this trend is out there. Uh, in terms of acreage and yield, uh, our bearing acres, uh, the yellow bars, have been uh, trending down uh, over the past uh, uh, several years, as you can see. Uh, the yield then, uh, the production uh, uh, per, per acre uh, is trending up. So um, the 
uh, the productivity with which we're, um, you know, the density with which we're planting these new, uh, these blocks of, uh, of acreage is getting more productive um, and better farming techniques and, and all that. So um, we are uh, seeing a generally an increase in, in that yield, which again, um, when it comes to uh, deciding uh, the way forward, it's important to know these trends. Now, this 2022 number um, for acreage, uh, that, come that, that, that was out of the USDA's NAS survey uh, on a yearly basis, but they just completed their five-year agricultural census, which is a far more detailed study. So the last data point we have from 2017 um, matches that. And so anyway, the, uh, the 2017 to 22 acreage, again, based on that latest survey, was down 8%. However, that ag census just came out, and that 22 number is slightly revised. Um, so now instead of decreasing acreages, uh, uh, bearing acres um, by 8%, it appears as though over that five year stretch, we've actually increased acreage by 11%. So that, that takes a, a dip on that yield, assuming we know what that, uh, uh, assuming that production um, uh, value is, uh, was accurate for 22, but, but Yield is still increasing, and uh, now we find um, through this latest uh, ag census data point that we've actually been um, growing acreage quite a bit in the United States, so something to keep in mind. All right, so back in August, uh, the USDA estimated 236 million bushels for U.S. production. Uh, U.S. Apple at our annual conference in Chicago um, met <clears throat> took a look at that number. Uh, I estimated, uh, I included back other states. The USDA estimates just the, the sum of the top seven apple producing states. Um, and they've uh, jettisoned uh, trying to collect data on apple production outside of those top seven. So North Carolina, Minnesota, uh, Ohio, those those states aren't included. So I, I estimate those and add them back into the total. And then we talk about whether or not we think the uh, those those uh, estimates for the top seven states that USDA has made uh, are are up to date or not, and we uh, and we make our estimates. So, 256 million bushels uh, for a four percent generally year over year increase was where we thought we might be heading into this season. So, where were we when we got our first data point? So, 191 million bushels in U.S. storages as of November 1st. Uh, that breaks down to fresh at 140, processing at 51 million bushels. So the last time we had a November uh, data point that large was November 2014. Many of you may remember that season. Uh, 188 million bushels was reported back then. Uh, fresh was actually a higher figure than what we're having here, but the processing a lower figure. So um there were some uh lots of additional uh processors in storage uh this uh this year going into the season so um we have uh, a lot of those uh total he uh holdings uh was 32 percent year over year uh increased the fresh was slightly higher at 36 processing 23 percent year over year so a 32 percent year over year change uh not insignificant um what's driving that Washington reported 152 million bushels in storages. That was up nearly 40% year over year. Those 42 million bushels of additional growth uh, represented about 90% of that total growth. And just for context, their growth alone was larger than the production out of Michigan and Pennsylvania combined. Uh, so when when Washington has a big year, that really uh, uh, really moves the needle. Uh, New York reported 15 million bushels of storages. That's 44% year over year increase, um, about 5 million bushels, and, and really the remainder of that, uh, uh, the total growth. Now, just as a caveat, um, the, we found, found um, we did an audit off season and uh, added additional storages that hadn't been in our sample before. There's about 2 million of these quote unquote new storages. Uh, so if we uh, if we add that back to uh, to the prior year, assume they were uh, still in operation back then, that year over year growth rate is closer to 25%. In Michigan, uh, 12 million bushels in November storages. That's down 6% year over year, but don't be fooled. 12 million is still a good number uh, for Michigan. Uh, that's about a million uh, bushels um, 
uh, down year over year, but still 26% above their five-year average. So um, these three top producing states uh, all hit it out of the park, and uh, that's why we're in uh, the boat we are now. Um, so in terms of uh, what was in storages, uh, typically Gala is the number one um, variety, uh, but uh, this year Honeycrisp took over at 30 million bushels, up 62% year over year. Galas at 29 million bushels, up 12%. Red Delicious, 26 million, up 44%. Granny Smith, 23 million, up 61%. Fuji's, 18 million, up 17%. And the other varieties, 13 million bushels, uh, rounding out the uh, as a category in itself. These are all the managed varieties, the branded varieties. Uh, looks like it's down 16%, but again, that's just a arithmetical construct because we took Envy for the first time out of the other varieties category and started reporting it on its own. There are about 4 million bushels for that um, that apple, and so the uh, um, so that growth rate actually looks like 10% uh, year over year growth if you add that back into uh, uh, the calculation. Um, and that Envy replaced Brayburn. So now Brayburn is out of the, uh, is back into the other categories uh, uh, going forward. Um, in December, we, uh, there's still negative absorption. So some of those, some of these states um, with late season, uh, heavier in the late season varietals, they're shipping apples out in November, but also bringing apples in to the storage houses in, I'm sorry, in December. Uh, so there's a bit of a, a confusing net effect that's happening. So we generally wait till December uh, to start um, uh, looking at uh, what those storage volumes mean for, uh, uh, for implied production. But in December, we are at 173 million bushels. Uh, that broke down to fresh and processing at 124 and 49 respectively. Uh, that November data point, we said it was 32% year over year, and the December data point looked like we accelerated movement and actually chipped away a little bit, and we're only 29% uh, year over year December, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I think that was a little bit of an aberration because uh, March, our latest March data point uh, that just came out, uh, we are 34% above uh, March 2023 volumes. Uh, so actually, we've we've slipped a little bit. We've lost some traction, uh, and uh, are now 34% year over year uh, compared to last March. So what does the December data point help us do? Well, we can look at, on average, how many, um, what percentages of apples are left in storages uh, in any given December. Uh, that works out to be about 56% over the last five season. Um, uh, to think of it another way, so that would be the yellow portion. Uh, to think of it another way, um, on average, 44% of apples uh, uh, produced are moved, that is, are not in our sample prior to the December 1st of any given year. So, using our August estimate of, of 256 million bushels, uh, one of two things and possibly some combination of both are true. Uh, either pre-December movement has been relatively slow um, and uh, and actually uh, the the 256 looks good, but but we've only moved 33% of the apples uh, prior to December, or uh, the pre or the uh, the production estimate is low and we've moved closer to the the average of 44%, in which case our production estimate is increased somewhere in the neighborhood of 305, 310 million bushels. So as I said, it, it's likely that um, there might have been some sluggish movement and uh, our estimate was off. And so that production, um, that production volume would fall somewhere in between these two values. So the uh, US Apple puts out in these uh, US Apple storage reports um, a calculation of movement. And that's simply, a, from a definition standpoint, the difference of one month to the next. Uh, we're not actually trying to get shipments or anything like that. But um, the apples that disappear out of the survey from month to month are, are assumed to be moved. Uh, the AMS uses real shipment data. Um, and they collect that consistently. Um, month every month, not just from uh, from November to to June, uh, as as I do with my survey, 
So it's a year long survey, um, all season. Um, it is, however, fresh only, and it is inclusive of exports. It's a voluntary survey with no estimations made. So the summation, the, the total of any given season's uh, AMS movement does not necessarily equal production. As I said, there's no processors in here and, um, and there's no estimates made for non-reporting. So uh, typically the, uh, uh, this, this movement data set is, is five to 25% below uh, total production um, volumes. And uh, it's about 10 to 25% below export data. So they're not even getting all the, uh, the export volume in there. But it is consistent from year to year. And so um, we can sort of look at these historical movement patterns um, as a template for, for uh, what's going on these days. So if we just start here and we look at this is, this is the 2014-2015 season. As we said, the last time we had storages um, that were as high as, as what we're showing this season. Uh, so that's the 2014-15 season versus the 22-23 season last year. And as you can see, uh, in August and September, in a big year, you really need to get going quickly and start hitting uh, some, some big movement, uh, you know, 10 million bushels uh, in that September timeframe, uh, not something you necessarily need to do uh, in a down year like last year. Um, for the bulk of the season, uh, October through May, you really need to be hitting 14 million bushels at least um, movement to, to move that kind of volume. Um, as you see last year, uh, not even a single month there hitting the 14 million. And then you need to also trickle in some of those uh, last year's apples into the current season. And so October, November, December, uh, you're continuing to sell those, uh, at least in the 2014-15 season, we're continuing to sell uh, the 2014 apples uh, uh, late into 2015. Interestingly, the, the trend uh, lately has been actually to, and this is, I, I can't believe I have to still re-pull this graph um, with the latest AMS data, but there's actually, uh, that's, that's March, that's March, 2024, uh, movement of 2022 apples. So uh, despite the fact that we have a big year this year, uh, we are still filtering uh, some of these um, year and a half uh, old apples into the system, uh, which is interesting and perhaps a little concerning. Um, so I uh, don't know if that's the best consumer experience, but we may uh, we may follow that blueprint uh, for the next year. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so here we are, 2014-2015 um, versus what's been happening this year. So here again, we did much better uh, than last year, um, getting off to a good September, but in that early season time frame, we were down about 4 million bushels compared to that last big year. We have had one month over 14 million, which is great, but here we are in February and we're about 12 million bushels again uh, under there. So taken together, we're over a month behind. Um, and so that trend that we saw last year with selling, uh, you know, a year and a half old apples into the system. Um, you know, I don't know if, if there are enough bins and enough storage space. Um, I guess it'll have to depend on what, what we're going to see this season. Um, but it's uh, entirely possible that uh, we'll need to continue selling those 23, uh, 24 apples well into 2025. Um, now, just a note about this season, I've spoken with some New York growers uh, that are uh, concerned, actually some Pennsylvania growers too, uh, already starting to see the first signs of uh, green tip, uh, which is basically the start of the season where spraying needs to start. And um, uh, following that, uh, we've, we've got bloom. And uh, the longer those blooms are uh, on the tree uh, earlier in the season, um, the, uh, the more uh, probability there is that we're going to have a frost and, and we could have an event such as we did in uh, 2012, where there was an early bloom and a frost event. Uh, that 2012 year uh, took out about 90% of Michigan's crop. Um, so 
who knows uh, if we have some uh, devastating losses, uh, maybe folks will be keeping uh, some of those, uh, some of this season's apples later into 2025. Again, not sure that's the best for the consumer, but um, if those apples are already uh, bought and paid for and, and uh, you, can, you can keep them relatively well and, and get a good price for them, then maybe uh, an event. So uh, what is the big difference then between the 24, 25 season? Uh, how were we able to, how were we able to move that much volume throughout the season? As I said, that uh, you know, U.S. consumption trends have really remained pretty static. Um, so the real difference is the fact uh, a decade ago we were really uh, doing much much better with exports. I think everyone points to the 2017-18 season as a as a high water mark because we were doing so well with India at that point. But um, taken in and in, in whole, the 2014-15 season was actually uh, the best, uh, the highest for exports uh, at 54 and a half million bushels, um, about uh, one and a half million bushels higher than that uh, uh, season about five years ago. So um, we, the, the moral of this story is uh, we really need to be, um, you know, hitting those exports, export markets, offshoring a lot of these apples uh, so they're not competing at home domestically. Um, Unfortunately, that's not been the case. So this is the Delta. The green line was the 2014-15 season. And last year, um, the 22-23 season and the yellow bars uh, are those lost sales as a result of, uh, you know, this, this downward trending uh, line here. Uh, as you can see here, we're, we're starting to, to pick back up this year uh, and hopefully we can remain consistent. But um, important to, uh, to, to recoup some of those sales. So um, about 41% fewer uh, exports uh, than we had a decade ago. This year, as I mentioned, uh, we're way up from last year. We're up close to 50%, 6 million more bushels uh, than last year, uh, but we're still underneath that green shaded area. We need to be tracking that line or exceeding it. Um, and uh, we're, we're still slightly below, about 9% below uh, that 14-15 season. So where are we sending them? Uh, Mexico uh, has about a quarter of our exports and we are doing well, we're up 44% year over year. Uh, Canada, unfortunately, is down year over year uh, with 15% share. And then here are other major trading partners, all of them up considerably. Um, uh, you know, Central America and uh, Southeast Asia, um, really uh, huge, huge areas of uh, uh, growth for us. And so we hope to keep those going. India, as you recall, uh, as I mentioned, the 2017-18 season uh, was really great. They, uh, India was our number two export market ahead of Canada. And then the steel and aluminum tariffs went into place and India retaliated and that market went to zero. Uh, so last year, uh, at our at our height, we were again uh, just just five years ago. We were sending them eight million bushels, and last year we sent them eight thousand bushels. Um, so we are up forty five hundred percent year to date, which is great. We're up to uh, over half a million bushels sent there, and and hopefully we can hit a million before the uh, the end of this season. Um, but a million is a is a far cry from eight million. So. You know, while we were gone, Turkey and Iran and some of these places moved in and uh, and took this market share. But, you know, uh, we grow some really good apples here and some varieties that they perhaps don't have. Uh, and maybe we can interest in uh, interest them in, in those and uh, and build back that market. Uh, Israel, another down point, obviously, for, um, you know, perhaps for uh, obvious reasons, the um, uh, the strife in the area, the war in the area, um, uh, causing some disruptions to that, um, uh, down 50% your day. So, uh, in terms of exports by variety, uh, that information is not available from USDA, but uh, Washington being 90% uh, of, of the exports season to date, uh, looking at what they're shipping. 
uh, it <clears throat> will tell us, <clears throat> for the most part, what apples we're sending overseas. So Gala, uh, over a quarter share, up 72% year over year, about 5 million bushels. Red Delicious, number two, 25% share, up 91%. Uh, other varieties, um, up 53%. Fuji's, um, up over 100%. Granny's, the next, also up over 100%. And Golden's, um, rounding out the top uh, uh, five with uh, other varieties. Um, so, uh, again, Washington, the primary uh, exporter there uh, so far, year to date, 18.3 million bushels, up 84%. Of that, 1.4% uh, of their exports are organic. So a small share on that organic side. So any discussion of, um, you know, the supply situation, uh, it's great to talk about, um, you know, exports, but we also need to, to know what kind of uh, fresh apples we're bringing into the system from overseas as, as imports. So going back to that 14, 15 season, as we're heading into what was um, likely known was going to be a, a big year, um, exports um, were, uh, I'm sorry, imports were about 10 million bushels. And then after that big year, they were able to pivot pretty quickly and reduce their imports by 32% the following year, going down 3 uh, million bushels. Not a, again, not a huge volume, but every, every million bushel counts that we don't have to, uh, that we can sell ours rather than bring them in from outside. Um, now we've done well over the decade to bring imports down considerably. We're down 50% uh, over the decade to about 5 million bushels, but you see this profile. It used to be that we'd bring them in uh, again, counter seasonally, uh, we'd be bringing in these apples and then when we got our own, they would drop to zero. Well, that's not really the case in this globalization, uh, in this globalized world we have, and, and perhaps some sticky long, longer term contracts and partnerships. Uh, it looks like we are still continuing to bring uh, these imports in throughout the season, just at a, at a lower, more constant rate. So um, not saying that's, you know, I think that's just a, a reality of the business world, but obviously uh, the extent to which we can control uh, those imports and um, um, not not bring them in and, and, and substitute them for domestically produced apples uh, would be, um, of course, the ideal. So let's take a look now at um, some inflation. Uh, all items, and this is from the downturn, we'll look at a couple of different periods here. Uh, all items since um, basically the shutdown uh, have increased in price uh, by about 20%. That's our general inflation. Of that food increasing a little bit faster at 25%. Uh, fresh fruits, um, uh, because of this uh, latest uh, correction here, this latest uh, bit of deflation on the fresh fruits, 16% um, up over uh, since the downturn. And apples, as I mentioned, uh, were up also considerably, but have been trending down of late. And so while they're still up since March, 9%. They are um, uh, considerably less inflated than uh, than than most things in in the economy these days. So this is the uh, Apple CPI. This is uh, that um, uh, that other line, uh, the the Apple uh, CPI line uh, taken in depth. So this is that drop we've seen the the 23 24 season to date. Uh, down 11%. Um, as a historical context, when we had that last large season, the 2014-15, that whole season, July to August, we were down 12%. So uh, we appear to be um, uh, dropping more steeply. Uh, so this is, again, the, the latest data point we have uh, is February, and this is the February um, Data point here, uh, prices were only down 8% at this point. They had another 4% to fall. So hopefully we don't have uh, additional ways to go here, but um, um, 
it's it's not looking great. Um, you know, here we are only in February and uh, we're sort of already matching uh, the total price declines that we saw a decade ago. So um, not encouraging uh, signs out of uh, out of the sort of the retail price point here. Um, but let's, uh, so this is actually a, a, a deflationary uh, uh, environment that we're in and, and very challenging. Uh, we'll take a look at some grower prices here in a minute. So let's let's take a look at uh, the producer price index uh, alongside that uh, drop. So, you know, this is what we're dealing with uh, heading into the, this season. The cost to grow apple, the, 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 the producer price index was up 34 um, percent. So anything from, you know, the, the nursery trees to uh, fertilizer and, and pesticides and, and those sorts of things utilities, uh, and especially labor, um, those costs ha have been going up uh, really uh, significantly uh, leading into this season. And of course, at that point, um, you know, you, you can't defer those costs. You have to, you have to uh, pay for them and, and, and bake them in and, and hope that the prices will justify uh, those costs uh, when the season uh, gets going. And so not only were prices up 34%, but now we've seen since harvest, apple prices are down 11%. So that is, that's a double whammy for, for our industry, um, causing uh, a, a number of growers uh, in the industry at large to at many times sell at a loss, um, um, selling, selling these boxes of apples for far less than they cost to produce uh, and just hoping to recoup some, uh, some of that investment. So of course we've been looking at those CPI, those retail prices, and we can assume those retailers are still making their uh, uh, some sort of profit margin um, uh, and uh, hopefully incentivizing some volume purchases from the consumer as a result of those 11 percent price uh, uh, you know, uh, price decreases. But this is the shipping point pricing. These are essentially the farm gate prices that the, the the farmers are getting. This is AMS data. Uh, for the 23-24 uh, season, this is for cartons, trade pack, uh, all item sizes, all grades, all domestics, and export sales. So here we have honey crisps uh, down 44% season to date, down $30 a box uh, or a, a, a trade pack. Uh, Granny Smith down 46%, $30, bucks, uh, also $27.50 a box. Uh, Golden Delicious down 22%, Fuji down 21%, Gala's down 11%, and that's the bright spot. Red Delicious prices down 21%. These are, um, again, if we were concerned about the retail price point where we already know the, the retailers got margin in there, um, you know, this is this is the real deal. This is where the farmers are, are starting to feel uh, um, you know the real pinch. Uh, those are those are drastic uh, uh, decreases that um, we need to be looking into. So uh, again, what's the you know apart from the general inflation that we've seen, you know we showed the uh, all um, you know the the general inflation of twenty percent, twenty five percent from uh, from the downturn. Um, so that's causing everything from from fuel and and uh, those utilities and chemicals et cetera to inflate in price, but it's really been the labor. So the as many of you know, uh, every apple in the U.S. is is picked by hand, and um, and the majority of that almost exclusively uh, is done by temporary agricultural labor uh, through the H-2A program. Uh, those H-2A workers are um, paid a wage, mandated, dictated by the U.S. Department of Labor in their adverse effect wage rate. So the U.S. average AWER adverse effect wage rate is $17 an hour. That's up 5% year over year. In the seven main apple producing states, if you take them as an average, um, it's uh it's a higher percentage 18 22 an hour and that's uh, up six percent year over year and this has been going on for quite a while um 
in 2014, the Apple States, again, we're looking back at that uh, season and, and trying to compare what the conditions were then uh, with now. Back then, this is not adjusted for inflation, but it was 11.20 an hour. There's been a 63% increase over the decade in your number one variable cost, um, uh, your number one cost period. Um, and that is, um, I don't know how much longer the industry can bear that. Uh, if this continues to increase uh, 5 to 10 percent a year um, over the course of uh, the next few years, uh, I think that uh, we're going to reach that tipping point where uh, a lot of folks decide that uh, they can't pay for that labor to pick those apples and they're going to get into a different game. Uh, so let's take a look state by state. In uh, California, the number one uh, highest AWER state, uh, it's close to $20 an hour, up 6 percent. Michigan and uh, Oregon, uh, sorry, uh, Washington and Oregon, next two highest states, up 7% at 1925. Uh, Michigan at 1850, up 7%. New York at 1780, up 5. Uh, Pennsylvania, 1720, up 4. And uh, Virginia at 1581, up 6. So uh, none of these are going down. I think that's uh, an impossibility by the calculation they have. So we can only assume these will continue to go up uh, for the considerable uh, or, or for the uh, uh, in, into the short term, at least. Um, it's a, an election year and only uh, Congress really has the ability to or the Department of Labor has the ability to um, unilaterally sort of put a cap on these. And that's what we were asking for. Um, uh, we, we've gotten legislation passed in the House twice, uh, the last time in 2021, uh, both times died in the Senate. Um, all we were asking for was a uh, freezing the AWER level for one year and capping the annual growth rate at three and a quarter percent. Um, you know, that sounds bad, but, uh, you know, three, three and a quarter percent to, to increase, you know, uh, forever uh, on, on your labor cost. Um, but uh, it's a heck of a lot better than those six and seven percents. So where would we be uh, in that world? Um, you know, we'd be down uh, between 275 and, and 175 um, per hour uh, for across uh, a lot of these growing states. And so U.S. Apple will be going to Capitol Hill next week for uh, our fly-in. And uh, as as it has been for the last However many years, decade or more, um, ag labor is our number one issue, and we will be uh, showing the, the the legislators, the regulators, uh, these data, and uh, trying to impress upon them the the urgency of this, and um, the extent to which uh, any of you listening uh, can um, engage with us to to help your uh, elected representatives know as constituents. Uh, this is not tenable, um, and uh, this cannot go on at, at some point in the very near future, and we may have already seen it this year. Um, as I said, costs cost will exceed. Uh, costs that have to be paid for before you know what the price is going to be will exceed uh, what you can sell these apples for. Um, and so uh, it's, a, it's a serious situation. So what else are we doing? Uh, as I mentioned, that domestic demand situation is kind of stagnant. We're, we're doing our best to, uh, uh, to, to move that needle. Uh, we're obviously doing our best to offshore as many additional apples as we can through uh, increased exports uh, and reducing imports to the extent possible. Um, but we can also look to the USDA uh, through their comp commodity procurement uh, programs to uh, help relieve some of this uh, domestic uh, domestic supply uh, through additional uh, um, apple buys. So back in June 2023, as I mentioned, we started this season with uh, a lot of processors and storage. So um, the last season uh, was, was a good season for processors and, and the prices were good. So some of these big uh, corporations filled their filled their storages uh, with these apples that don't necessarily, um, uh, they can't stay in there forever, but they can stay in there certainly longer than uh, fresh apples can. And their storages were full really when the, uh, when the season hit. And so 
Uh, USDA stepped in, made a over $20 million Apple product buy to, to try and relieve um, uh, some of that uh, excess supply uh, as we're going into the season. Then uh, in November, again, we were always in close communication with USDA, telling them what varieties, what sizes are in, in um, you know, uh, what, what states. Uh, and so letting them know, um, you know, if you're trying to make a, a dollar go further and, and these growers are willing to, to sell you uh, these apples to, to get them out of their uh, storages, um, you know, this is what you need to be buying. And so uh, they made another two and a half million dollar Apple product buy in November. Then in December, more Apple products, 26 and a half million. These weren't section 32. These were part of their standard buys, but Perhaps they heard us and, and uh, increased even those uh, beyond typical levels. Uh, January, 20, January 2024, so again, since the season started in November, they've been making apple buys November, December, January. Uh, January, they uh, did three um, apple buys worth about $56 million. Um, then in February, uh, one and three quarter, uh, they just issued another one for fresh apples offer due tomorrow. Um, so um, in terms of USDA helping to uh, relieve some of this excess uh, supply, they've been uh, they've been a good partner and, and continue to um, you know be a willing participant to help us uh, with these. Thus far this uh, this season, uh, purchase USDA purchases over a hundred million dollars. So uh, thanks to them for that. Um, so I know I flew through it, uh, but I'm going to end it there and uh, see if there are any questions at this point. Yeah, Chris. So we have a number of questions. Um, one of the first ones that came in was if you go if you if you can if you can go all the way back to the one of your earliest slides that had to do with apple acreage, uh, bearing acreage, um, and you showed the, the discrepancy between the 2022 data there. Um, what, I guess for lack of a better way to put it, what happened? Like, do we think that the USDA's previous numbers like 18 through 21 were just wrong or um, did they get a more thorough count or any? Yeah, any yeah. The the ag the agricultural census is a far far more detailed uh, survey and is is likely has a much smaller uh, percentage of error. So the the survey that takes place uh, in these interim years uh, through the National Agricultural Statistics, um, the the NAS survey, um, you know they they do their best, but there's there's limited sample sizes there's a, you know estimation and and uh, and error in that so i was surprised to see the magnitude of the jump that is not an incons in, uh, inconsistent or uh, uh, it's not a small jump um, it, it's it's not it's not a rounding error and, and if people are you know looking at these data here um, and making planting decisions and and acreage decisions uh, and and um, you know that's tough that's why good data matters and you know knowing knowing that acreage has increased not only as acreage increased but as we know all those new plantings are higher density than than the, than whatever they're replacing at least equal to if not higher density so um you know uh acreage increasing 11 percent over five years is a heck of a different story than down eight percent and so um yeah, it's it is an eye-opening stat and something I just uh, included this morning because I thought it was uh, important for the context. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, another question came up about exports and um, India. Could you uh, elaborate a little bit on what's going on there? I know that we were sort of a um, a, a side effect victim, if you will, of the steel mm -hmm. and aluminum tariff um, tariffs that came in, and India retaliated against a number of agricultural products. One of which happened to be apples, which cost the apple industry dearly. Um, what what hap What's the current status? Have those tariffs been been reduced or or? Um... Yeah, so there's still there's still tariffs to India, but uh, the retaliatory tariffs have been removed. Um, um, and so the you know that difference, basically the playing field is back to where it was in 2017 2018. Um, 
you know, those relationships um, that that our growers had uh, with that community, uh, I'm sure are, uh, you know, still intact somewhere. But in the, you know, in the in the five years uh, hence, um, they have found different suppliers. Now, as I said, we can compete on quality. Um, and in a market, in a, in a year such as this, we may even be able to compete on price a little bit. Um, but, uh, but as I said, we were 8 million bushels at our high point, down to 8,000 last year. Um, so essentially zero. Um, that, is, that is a long way to climb our way back to. Um, and as I said, we're doing, we're doing great this year to have India in the top 10. Um, but, uh, you know, it's going to take some time. And, uh, but I think the, the, the Indian consumer, um, you know, because of that long track record and, and the, hopefully some of those relationships still being intact, uh, we can, you know, uh, displace some of those cheaper apples that are coming in. Um, and, uh, you know, from some of those places like, like Turkey or, uh, um, Iran or, or, or what have you. Okay, yeah, because I mean, not a lot of Northeast apples go overseas, but um, of course, if those um, Northwest apples don't go to India, they have to find a home domestically or elsewhere. And then of course affects the market price that um, farmers that, that apple orchards in the Northeast here get, so. Yeah, you know, this Israel is one one market that I think the, the, uh, the East Coast, um, uh ships to um and unfortunately yeah that one's down uh we 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 did recently have a conversation um with some state secretaries of agriculture asking about additional uh, whether at the state or federal level additional um buys that they could make and uh, one thing we were talking about was uh, aid to gaza and special special buys that we could be uh asking the government to make uh in terms of uh, international aid um, so, uh, that's, that's obviously not Israel, but, uh, but it's, it's in the region related to that. So we, uh, we, we made that ask recently and, um, we've got some willing, willing, uh, participants at the state secretary of agriculture level. Um, another trade, uh, question that came up is, um, and, and looking for just a little bit of insight here from you or commentary. Um, the U.S. is a net exporter of fresh apples. We are a net importer of apple juice concentrate. Mm -hmm. um, much of that comes from China. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts on, I guess, the, the Chinese, the Chinese apple production, of course, is huge. Um, it's 10 if, we, if we grow 250 million bushels, they're growing 2.5 billion. So, yeah. So do we... I mean, obviously they're dominating the uh, the global apple juice concentrate market. Um, we see them less in the fresh market. Are, are do you see them that, that changing at all that dynamic? Uh, China's tricky. There's so much wrapped up with other stuff. Um, apples, I'm not sure, are uh, in the people trying to negotiate these things. Um, it, you know, I think there are other sources of apple juice concentrate that. You know, if we needed to uh, have some negotiating power uh, with China, we could we could say we were going to go to Ukraine or, uh, you know, again, Ukraine's another problem. I don't know if they're continuing with their production of uh, apple juice concentrate in the same way they were uh, prior to their uh, struggles. But, um, um, you know, there are other sources, uh, as I mentioned, Turkey and other places that uh, that we we could be using as leverage against China, but there's so many other things baked into that China piece that, uh, and yeah, with with them growing uh, 2.5 billion bushels um, of not probably super high grade apples, um, yeah, they've they've got that apple juice concentrate market um, pretty well sewn up. I I don't know what the price differential between the domestic uh, cost of production versus uh, those dehydrated bricks that come over from uh, from China are, but uh, clearly um, they're able to do it at scale that uh, that allows them uh, on a per unit price to, to just be um, really too competitive for our grower, for our processors not to, to look at. 
Sure. And and in the fresh market, who are our main global competitors and, and what's going on with them? Um, well, um, yeah, Poland is a big market. They, um, they, they ran afoul of uh, Russia a number of years ago uh, when they support, when they, uh, you know, may, you know, basically joined the West in condemning the, uh, the invasion of the Crimea uh, by Russia. And Russia was Poland's number one export market. And uh, because of that, they shut Poland out of uh, Russia and Poland now had nowhere to send their apples. So they were, they've been trying to get access to the US market, but haven't undergone the phytosanitary uh, requirements uh, to prove they're not gonna bring other pests um, into the US. And so at this point, We've been able to keep Polish apples uh, out of out of the U.S. from competing, but uh, they've got a lot of them, uh, and we don't know that. Again, other political forces at play, you know, NATO and all the rest. Uh, apples may be, um, you know, something that they give to Poland uh, as as thanks for something else. We're, we're continuing to educate USDA about those phytosanitary concerns and and the economic impact of of allowing those apples into our space. Um, but uh, as I said, that might not last forever. Um, and yeah, uh, in terms of, you know, those fresh apple uh, production, you know, really the U.S. is leading the way in terms of quality. Um, but uh, New Zealand and, and Chile uh, counter seasonally, they're uh, huge producers in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, growing a lot of the varieties um, that, uh, uh, that we're bringing in. Great, thank you. Uh, we seem to have gotten, we seem to have caught up on the questions. Re as a reminder, you can type your questions into the, the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel if you have any. Um, I will ask one more question. Um, I mean, I don't know if your crystal ball is any better than than anyone else's, but um, what do you see happening with with labor and I mean, given that it's an election year and um, and the division that's going on in Congress, I mean, do you think there's any hope that we're going to see any movement on anything like a Farm Workforce Modernization Act or um, AWER reform or anything um, even remotely yeah. that in the next it's, couple of years? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I, I wish I was more optimistic. As I said, we're heading to Capitol Hill uh, next. Uh, next week uh, with 50 or more um, members of US Apple um, and uh, and we'll be we'll be making our, our, our case directly to the the politicians but um, yeah in the election year you know the, the farm uh, the farm bill is working its way through we're not sure if even that is going to go through there's possibilities of um, putting you know standalone stuff uh, or our um, you know, we will continue to impress. Unfortunately, the Department of Labor under Biden seems to be unwilling to hear these concerns. Now at USDA, um, they, they seem to be a little bit more receptive. And so, you know, it's our hope that we can take individuals within the administration um, and, uh, and have them make our case for us, but, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think the more that we can do to show that we are at this tipping point, um, that these five, six, 10% per annum increases in the number one costs of production uh, or line item and, you know, the, the cost of production um, is simply untenable. And um, it, it, it doesn't even, you know, from an economic sense, this is money that, um, as as good as these uh, workers are, is getting sent out of the country. And so, you know, I'm not sure that we're ever going to get a domestic labor force that is able to, um, you know, the, the majority of these labor needs are, are are needed in the three months during harvest. And and you know, there's some amount of labor needed for pruning and and other things throughout the season, but you really, you know, that bell curve, you you need that, <clears throat> you need uh, a lot of workers dur during a small amount of the year. 
And so really this is a perfect labor force um, for that job. They are skilled, they are coming back year, year after year. Um, and so they don't have to be retrained and, and uh, they are more efficient, et cetera. <clears throat> we love the labor force, we wanna keep it. <clears throat> but, um, you know, these AWER rates aren't, <clears throat> aren't uh, shared with the community until uh, you've already made your, 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 you know, sure. before the season starts. These, these, these aren't row crops that, that, you know, you can, you can make planting decisions uh, in any given year based on, on information that's available to you on, on those costs of production. These are durable assets that, that last in the ground between 30 and 40 years. You need to manage that asset and uh, you need to continue to reinvest and, and replant and, and keep your orchards up to date. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, not knowing what your, what your costs of, uh, of labor going into a season is, 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 is risky. Um, and uh, as we've seen, um, there seems to be no, no indication from the Department of Labor that they're, um, they're understanding the, 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 the challenges of this, uh, of the specialty crop world uh, relative to some of the other industries that may be using H2A. Great. A uh, couple of questions just came in, actually. Um, sure. One is, um, any advice for consumer messaging? Um, seems like the cost of production versus price deflation at, at retail uh, seems like a pretty strong one. You know, should we be making the case that apples are an exceptional buy right now compared to uh, perhaps other foods or other snacks or? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Um, you know, it's kind of like what leading with your chin or something. It's, it, it's, um, yeah, I think we'd like to move volume. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean, certainly having folks eat two apples a day instead of one would, would help, um, uh, tremendously. And we definitely need to try and do what we can to move the needle on domestic consumption. I don't know what the best way forward is that um, if we're positioning ourselves against other, you know, unhealthy snack foods or against other categories within the produce department. Um, but uh, certainly um, when the consumer goes to, um, I don't have, oh, I have actually on my notes here, uh, I can tell you, <clears throat> I have blueberries, bananas, and uh, citrus down there. Uh, bananas are, uh, down 1% year-to-date, citrus down 1%, and other fresh fruit up 2% year-to-date. So we're down 11, and bananas and citrus are down 1%. So relative to some of those competitors, at least in the produce department, um, we're more, we're, it seems like a, a better buy. Um, but uh, um, of course, the the the, the shopper goes in there expecting to get a bunch of bananas, a bunch of apples. Maybe, maybe they get um, a few more than they than they have before. Uh, maybe not uh, two a day, but uh, 1.3 a day. Um, but I, as I said, I don't have those consumption data uh, from, from Nielsen or IRI, so I don't know real time if um, these price discounts are driving volume. I can see some of the data in the movement, but um, we're, we're it's not it's not spiking the way I would hope with an 11% discount. Um, you showed the, uh, the the price impact by variety on a few varieties. Um, any thoughts on what might be happening with um, some of the lesser varieties like Mac, Cortland, even Gala? Well, Gala is down 13% on the on the shipping point on those farm gate prices. Um, uh, these are data out of AMS and they only have certain varieties reported. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure uh, if they have, uh, what other varieties are in there. These, these, <clears throat> these are certainly the, the, the top uh, volume uh, movers though. Okay. Um, well, we're coming up on the top of the hour. So um, I will give you the opportunity for any last uh, closing thoughts. Um, and uh, I guess after that, we'll, uh, we'll sign off. Any last thoughts, Chris? Oh, uh, no, not, not, not for me. Um, you know, this, as I mentioned before, that 
that data point out of uh, you know the uh, the, the latest uh, ag agricultural census um, you know really shows that data matters that that folks need to to, to have the, the latest and greatest to make the best decisions possible. And so uh, to the extent that anyone listening today, um, you know, would like to work with me and US Apple uh, on, uh, on collecting and reporting various data sets that you maybe feel lacking in the industry, please reach out. Great. Um, with that, we will sign off and just a, a plug for Farm Credity's future webinars. All of our webinars, past, present, and future, live at farmcredities.com forward slash webinars. We have a number of up, upcoming Outlook webinars and the recording of this webinar as well will be posted on there. Give us 24 hours to get it up on the website, but um, we have a number of upcoming ones as well. So check that out, farmcredits.com slash webinars. And uh, thank you very much, Chris, for your uh, insightful presentation today. And with that, we will adjourn. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks.